is my show. I'm finding stuff out that you want to know. Just ask me a question that I don't know. That's why finding stuff out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends on. Finding stuff out, finding stuff out, finding stuff out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Finding Stuff Out. I'm working on a really important invention today. I'm trying to invent a new sport. I found out a Canadian named James Naismith invented basketball. When he was a kid, over 100 years ago, basketball didn't even exist. I'll bet it took him a few tries to get it right. Ah, I'm bored. I can't play ball in the rain. When he grew up, James was asked to invent a game that kids could play indoors. Hey! So he combined a bunch of ideas from other games, and the rest is basketball history. So maybe if I combine a couple of these things, I'll be able to create a sport just as popular. And your questions about sports will help me figure it out. Here's a first question from Luca. How come in some sports we wear helmets and some we don't? Hmm. I don't know, Luca, but I'll find out the answer and lots more stuff about sports by the end of the show. Here's a question from Evan. How many sports are there? Good question, Evan. If I'm gonna make a new sport, I should probably make sure that it hasn't already been invented. Let's see. How many sports? Let's count them all. High life, squash, beach, volleyball, diving, curling, taekwondo. Cricket, bobsled, water polo, ping pong, bowling, luge, and judo, kayaking, triathlon. Uh oh, my head's getting warm. Trampoline, ooh, that's a lot. Archery, head getting hot. A triple play, a hole in one. Double headers, 10k runs, information overload. You're gonna make my head explode. Yay. You're gonna make my head explode. Ugh, that always hurts. But to answer your question, Evan, the Olympics have 35 sports. Everything from dressage, which is sort of like horse ballet. To curling. And there are hundreds of other sports that aren't in the Olympics. Like in Scotland, log throwing is a sport. Some people even toe wrestle as a sport. Prepare for total annihilation! It's an amazing feat of strength! Featuring feet and the agony of defeat! Anyway, no one really knows how many sports there are because people make up new ones all the time. What kind of sport would you invent? Sports. You guys love hockey, right? Yeah! Awesome. Well, what if you could invent any sport you wanted, though? Mine would be soccer. Ice, it's uh, you play soccer on ice. Sock ice, nice. I'd probably do basketball and soccer. You have to kick at the soccer ball and the basketball net. I would pick hawk la, foot. It's a mix of hockey, football, and lacrosse. My sport would be la rock. You play lacrosse with a rock. <laughs> Mine would be dodge a potato. It's a hot potato, but you play dodgeball with it. <laughs> If I had to invent a sport, it would probably be the sport of laughing. You guys want to play? Yeah! Awesome, let's go! Yeah! 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 <laughs> anyway, the next question's from Gianluca. Why do people brag when they win? Why do we brag? Because we won! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude and brag, but I found out that it's a natural thing for us to want to do. Even animals brag using what scientists call a dominance display. Dominance display. <laughs> Our close relatives, gorillas, thump their chest to be intimidating. So do pro wrestlers. A male peacock spreads his feathers to show the girls how great he is. That's where the expression, strutting like a peacock, comes from. Yeah! 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 
Social scientists say that when we brag about our favorite team, it makes us feel like we're part of a group. Sports brings all kinds of people together to cheer on their school, their city, or even their country. Hey, maybe I'll invent a sport so popular, it'll create world peace. Maybe not the kickboxing with skis idea. Why are you not allowed to use hands in soccer? Here, catch. Part of the fun of sports is testing our limits. We're used to catching the balls with our hands. Not getting to use your hands in soccer makes it more challenging, which makes it more fun. Hey, maybe I'll invent a type of soccer where you can only use your hands. I found out soccer isn't the only sport where you can't use your hands. An ancient Mayan ball game was probably the most challenging sport ever. They played it over a thousand years ago on fields like this one. You had to get the ball through a hoop, like basketball, but just by kicking it and bumping it with your hip. The penalty for losing could be death. Even in sports where you can use your hands, some athletes have extra challenges, like being in a wheelchair, but they still do really well at all kinds of sports. I'm here at the Ontario Science Centre with Bavlene Carr to find out more. Hi Harrison, thank you. So what we've got here are wheelchairs that can allow people to test out what it's like to race like a Paralympian in a marathon. You wanna try? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right Harrison, so use the wheelchair wheel to get started right. and the outside wheel when you've gotten up to speed. Okay, sounds right. good. We've got 50 meters to go, so you can press start whenever you're ready. Okay, go. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> this is actually so hard. Oh, it's not. No! No! I'm going to win! No! Yes! That was good, Harrison. How fast did I go? Well, I think you hit 6.1 kilometers an hour. Wow, that's pretty good, I guess. That's really good, but not as fast as a wheelchair athlete. No, they not. go at 35 kilometers an not hour. Not even close. <laughs> anyway, speaking of fast. How fast does a soccer ball go? How fast can a soccer ball go, Maggie? Well, that depends if it's in a car or in a rocket ship. But seriously, I found out that a pro soccer ball player can kick a ball at 100 kilometers per hour. That's as fast as a car traveling on a highway. So I checked that out on the internet, but I was wondering if it was correct. Well, they use a radar gun to record how fast a soccer ball goes. Okay. Just like the police used to record when someone's speeding. Here, at the Science Center, they have a radar gun to measure the speed of a baseball pitch. 67, nice. A pro baseball player can pitch much faster than I can. A batter only has a quick second to guess what kind of pitch it is. Goalies in soccer and hockey also have to react fast if they want to be the best. I don't know who's the best athlete. Well, one of the best ways to figure that out is to compete. You know, compete against right. each other, but you can also keep track of the statistics and record the fastest and the strongest and use that. So kind of like on a baseball card where they show how many hits they have or how many swings, like that? That's a really good example. And there's people who keep track of all those things. They make a career out of it. Right. So what kind of statistics are there? Well, one thing is you can record who's running the fastest, right? And then you can also keep track of how fast you reacted to the sound of the gun going off and then you can also track how fast people move their feet. So coaches keep track of those little right. things and help people improve. So how can I use the statistics on me to improve my game? Well, we've got a racing track right here. If you want it, we can try that out. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Awesome. So over here, Harrison, you can actually race against an Olympic sprinter, a cheetah, or a T-Rex. Sweet, I think I'm gonna go with the Olympic sprinter. All right. So, so do I get a medal if I win? Uh, I think you're gonna have to buy that at the shop. <laughs> I guess I will have to. And here's my Olympian opponent. She can run this short track in two seconds flat. Yes! Whoa! <laughs> 
2.3 seconds. The Olympian beat me, but that was so close. If I practice and keep track of my statistics, I can only get better. Thanks for helping us find stuff out. My pleasure. Oh, I wonder if golf on ice could be my next sport. Ooh. Oh. Flona had a question about golf balls. How come golf balls always have these little indents in them? I checked the answer. Then I checked again, because I didn't believe it. The little indents are called dimples, and they help a golf ball go faster through the air. Golf balls used to be smooth, like this ping pong ball. Then golfers noticed that old dented balls went the furthest. You'd think that things go faster if they're smooth and sleek. But it turns out that when a ball flies through the air, it leaves a wake, like the wake a boat makes. What happens next is sort of like this. The air behind a smooth golf ball pulls at it, sort of like these water skiers. But when the ball is bumpy, it makes the air around it bumpy too. And the bumpy air doesn't pull on the ball as much as smooth air. The dimples not only help the ball go farther, they also help it go higher. But golf balls aren't the only things that go faster when they're bumpy. A dolphin can ripple its skin to help it swim faster through the water. Scientists are even working on a submarine with ripply skin to see if they'll go faster. Even with a bumpy golf ball, I guess I still need more practice. Here's a question from Alexander. Why do we have to practice sports? To help find out, please welcome my special guest, physical activity researcher, Dr. William Harvey. Hey, Harrison. Hey. <laughs> welcome to my show. Thanks for having me on your show. Please call me Billy. Sure thing, sport. <laughs> so Alexander was wondering why we have to practice so much. Well, let me show you how. You've probably seen these games at a carnival before. Yeah. In order to win a prize, you got to get the ball in the basket. Right. So just like... Ah, oh, I hate carnival games. I can never get it in. The ball just will never go in. Well, you know why, right? This is the first time that you practice is when you throw the ball. Imagine how expensive it would be if you were practicing at a carnival game. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you get it in then? Try another one. Okay. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? Sure. What you're supposed to try to do is lean in a little closer. Yeah. Right? And try to throw it easier with a little bit more of an arc so you get the ball in. Okay. Okay. Let me try that. What are you doing? You broke my concentration. <laughs> well, athletes even have to deal with distractions. Just like at a carnival game where there's bells and whistles and lights, you have to be able to concentrate. But if you say to yourself, concentrate, you may tense up. And you may actually perform worse. Wait, so am I not supposed to concentrate? Yeah, you're supposed to concentrate, but it's not like you think. OK, so if you think about how a tennis player gets ready for a serve, mm -hmm. they'll bounce a ball two or three times, right? Right. Before they do the serve. That's called a ritual. So if they do it every time the same way, what happens is it helps them to focus their mind and their body on what they need to do. Right, so should I try that? Mm-hmm. OK. Right. That was really close. Good job. Yes. Can I do the same thing again? Awesome. <laughs> I Good guess job. practice really does help. Yeah, if you do the same thing over and over again, uh, what happens is you build automatic skill, right? Which some people call motor memory. Right. Right. So that if you, what you need, really need to do is not think about what you do, you actually just do the skill. Speaking of which, here's a question from Massimo. Why when you play sports, you need to change into a different outfit? The Flat Earth Corner! I am Harristophanes! Here in ancient Greece, we don't change our clothes for sports. We don't wear any clothes for sports. Sure, it's a little embarrassing in gym class, but there's nothing worse than getting your toga caught in a javelin. Why would anyone want to wear clothes for sports? What? The ancient Greeks had no idea how many kinds of sports clothes we'd have today. So, Billy, is there actually a reason why we do? Sure there is. 
It's important for us to know that specialized clothing can help us to keep us comfortable at the same time as helping us to learn how to train to perform better. Right. Okay, so if you look at this uh, fleece uh, jacket and skiing, it would help to keep you warm. Right. Right? And you'd still be able to train. Now, if you were uh, downhill skiing and you're a competitive skier, this would be really tight against you to help cut wind resistance. Now, this set of hockey pants here, right? They're designed to be water resistant so that you don't get wet or cold. Right. Joshua had a similar question to Massimo's. Why when you play sports you have to wear equipment? Yeah, my mom says I don't need all this gear. Is she wrong? No, she's not wrong at all. Um, our bodies were designed for running, you know, so we could run away from big animals who are trying to eat us. Right. Some elite runners even run barefoot, so no equipment required. Wow. Well, when I play soccer, I have these cleats which have spikes on the bottom, so would I be better off barefoot? No way, because we want to make sure that you don't, first of all, you don't get hurt, right? Right. So this helps you to stay on the ground and it prevents you from twisting or from falling. What about these skates? So Harrison, what happens is that you'll notice that this blade is thinner and it's smaller, a lot smaller than the bottom of your foot. Right. Now, if you're using just your running shoe, mm -hmm. then it'd be different, right? Because it sticks more, right? Yeah. So what happens is at the bottom of the skate, when you have a sharpened skate and the ice surface, they're almost two perfect surfaces that work together. Oh, I think I finally understand something. Trains work sort of the same way. They glide along two thin tracks so they can carry heavy loads and still go fast. So it's similar for sports like bobsledding and skiing. Cool, well thanks for helping us find stuff out. Oh, and next time I go to the carnival, I'm gonna win all the prizes. Good, we'll share. Sounds good. Now here's a question from Caitlin. Why does the puck go so fast in hockey after you hit it? This is a matter for the law. Newton's law, that is. Sir Isaac Newton may look like a judge, but he was actually a scientist. About 400 years ago, he figured out three laws that explain how things move. To lay down the laws, I made this video for you. Law one, an object tends to keep doing whatever it's doing until something else acts upon it. So this ball will just keep sitting there, unless... Law two, how fast an object moves depends on how hard it's pushed and how much mass it has. A rock has a lot more mass than a foosball. It's way heavier, so it barely moves, even though the player is kicking it just as hard. Law three, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Ow, my foot! In other words, if you kick something really hard, your foot will feel as much push as the thing you kicked. You could have told me that before I kicked a rock. Pucks go fast on ice, because they are hard and smooth, just like the ice. In professional hockey, they actually freeze the pucks before a game, so they're even harder and don't bounce. So when a player takes a slap shot, the puck goes faster. To find out more, here's... My Great Challenge! Today, my great challenges are Mateo yeah. and Stefano. Yeah. Awesome, so today we're gonna see how fast you guys can shoot a puck, sound good? Yeah. The radar gun behind the net is gonna tell us how fast your shots are, okay? Okay. So the first shot we're gonna do is the wrist shot while standing still. Mateo, you go first. 66, that's pretty good. Okay, Stefano, you're up next. 68, nice. Looks like Stefano won this one. Yeah. Okay, now the last one is the slap shot, but this time you can move with it. 76. Whoa. Whoa, 80. It looks like Stefano's our winner. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Remember Newton's second law? How fast an object moves depends on how hard it's pushed and how much mass it has. The puck is very light, and it got hit hard. So it went fast. The first one was a wrist shot. Those shots are, usually have less power in it. And the last one, I got to skate up to the puck, so I got to put more speed and power into the shot. 
So how do you make a really good slap shot? Well, it's good to put your weight into the puck and all the weight on the front foot right. and follow through at the end of the shot. Well, what I do is I transfer all my weight from my upper body down onto my leg, mm -hmm. and I take my shot and I follow through, pointing with my, the end of my blade where I want the puck to go. Awesome. I found out a lot today by answering your questions, but I still haven't found out the answer to Luca's question, which kicked off the show. How come in some sports we wear helmets and some we don't? The big answer is... Crashing! In some sports, we move really fast, like when we're on a bicycle, and in other sports, balls or pucks come whizzing at our heads really fast. So, if there's a chance of collision... You'd be a dummy not to wear a helmet. I don't need a helmet, though, if I'm going to use softballs like this. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> Something bad happens every time I ask that question. I guess I'll never find a new sport to invent, but at least I could answer your questions. Thanks for watching Finding Stuff Out. See you next time. And by then, maybe I'll have found a new sport. Underwater tennis? Nah. Oh. Baseball on a skateboard? Huh. How many sports? Let's count them all. High life squash, beach volleyball, diving, curling, taekwondo, cricket, bobsled, water polo, ping pong, bowling, luge, and judo, kayaking, triathlon. Uh oh, my head's getting warm. Trampoline? Ooh, that's a lot. Archery, head getting hot, a triple play, a hole in one, double headers, 10k runs, information overload, you're gonna make my head explode!